How's it going folks? I'm Des with DesFit and I've been riding this Wahoo Kicker V5, the latest generation of their high-end direct ride bike trainer for quite some time now, having logged lots of miles on it with cycling training platforms like Zwift, Trainer Road, and Wahoo's own system app. And in this video, I wanted to share how well it's held up over the last couple years of hard riding for both durability as well as power accuracy. Now, one of the highlight new features of the Kicker V5 versus previous generation Kicker bike trainers is that it doesn't require any manual calibration in regards to power accuracy. It basically just silently auto calibrates in the background without you having to do anything. That's great, but my curiosity would be, would it actually remain accurate over a longer term without any manual calibration? Well, that's one thing we're gonna find out, along with the rest of my thoughts on this high-end trainer over the longer term. So with their high-end kicker bike trainers, Wahoo really hasn't changed the overall design of the kicker for numerous generations. What they've done over the years is just refined the original design, and with the kicker V5, it's actually quite similar to the previous generation V4. It still has a 16-pound flywheel, it can still provide up to 2200 watts resistance, it can simulate up to a 20% incline, it can virtually measure your cadence, it's virtually silent, it has multiple Bluetooth connections as well as AMP plus FEC connectivity, and it's compatible with bikes with 130 or 135 millimeter quick release axles as well as bikes with 12 by 142 and 12 by 148 through axles. Oh, and then you can also use this with bikes with 29 inch wheels, 700C wheels, 27.5, 650B, 26 inch, and even 24 inch bikes all by just adjusting this little blue bar at the bottom of the unit. And then you can also use this in conjunction with climbing simulation accessories like Wahoo's own Kicker Climb or the Elite Riser since the rear axle does rotate. And along with new automatic calibration, the Kicker V5 also has refined power accuracy down to about plus or minus 1% versus plus or minus 2% on the previous generation V4. And then the V5 also comes with their new axis action feet, which are designed to provide a little bit of side to side movement and to also help reduce vibration, as well as a new port in the back for their new direct connect accessory for hardwiring your bike trainer to your home network. So those axis action feet are designed to provide a little bit of movement and reduce that static feeling when you're riding indoors. And it comes with three different softness levels. And what's nice about these axis feet is that if you have the previous generation Kicker V4, you can buy an upgrade kit to get this feature. However, it's kind of hard to tell a difference with these feet, even with the softest option. So there is a slight difference if you have your kicker on a completely hard surface like a concrete floor, and there is some movement, but it's kind of subtle. But if you have your trainer on a trainer mat, which I think a lot of people do, it may be harder to tell a difference because trainer mats themselves also do have a bit of cushion. And then another new feature with the Kicker V5 is this little port back here, which is used with their Direct Connect accessory, which allows you to hardwire your kicker into your home network, which will prevent dropouts with your trainer software if you have a lot of wireless interference where you train. And it was kind of a slow rollout of this feature because the Direct Connect accessory was only available about six months after the V5 originally launched. And at that time, only a handful of apps supported it like Trainer Road as well as Wahoo's own Sufferfest. And then only just recently did Zwift finally support it. But at this point, I think most major apps support the Direct Connect accessory. Luckily, I don't necessarily experience dropouts or connectivity issues with the kicker with my indoor cycling training apps, but I know some of you out there do, so it is nice to see that this accessory is available for that reason. However, this accessory does cost $100, so that is not cheap by any means, but dropouts when you're training, that is super, super frustrating, so that's where this accessory comes into play. Now, it may seem kind of strange that they require an adapter for this, where they very well could have just put an RJ45 directly into the back of the trainer, but one argument around this is that the Direct Connect accessory has a quick disconnect feature where, let's say, if you were to accidentally trip over your Ethernet cable, well, it just safely disconnects right here, rather than if an Ethernet cable were directly attached, it would likely damage either the cable or the port on the trainer. But worry not, even without the Direct Connect accessory, the Kicker V5 comes with plenty of different wireless connectivity options, including three concurrent Bluetooth connections, AMP plus FEC, as well as Bluetooth FTMS, which was added via firmware update. So you'll basically be able to use this with any cycling training platform out there with pretty much any device out there. And one awesome thing that remains the same on the Kicker V5 versus previous generations is that it is virtually silent. So you'll pretty much only be hearing the sound of your drivetrain. There is of course the sound of the freewheeling when you're coasting, but that's just like a normal bike. But other than that, this is gonna be one of the quietest trainers around and it has remained just as quiet as the day I first got it. And then speaking of the cassette, the Kicker V5 comes with an 11 speed cassette with an 11 to 28 range included and it's already pre-installed. 
This one came with a Sunrace cassette, and although this isn't a SRAM or Shimano cassette, the Sunrace cassette has held up just fine. And if you're curious how smooth this cassette is, since it's not a SRAM or Shimano cassette, it does perfectly fine. A Shimano cassette may be just a tiny bit smoother and a tiny bit quieter, but that's just splitting hairs. This cassette has done great. And then another thing I wanted to talk about is that how this thing actually looks after 18 months of sweat dripping on it. I mean, these sort of things can get kind of grimy over time. And this is how it looks after a good wipe down with just a damp cloth. And as you can see, they did a good job with the finish on it where after a good wipe down, it basically looks like new. The only thing that I would say though is that the knob to adjust the wheel size does have a bit of corrosion from my sweat. It's kind of odd that this was the only thing I saw, but I thought I'd point that out. And then in terms of road feel or ride feel, this has a lot to do with the inertia from the flywheel. And to achieve this, the Kicker V5 uses a 16 pound flywheel, and that creates quite a realistic feel, I think. And it does a good job in simulating the inertia with the acceleration and coasting that I would experience outdoors. And then in terms of responsiveness with indoor cycling training apps, it does a good job in this department where with simulation apps like Zwift, quick changes in grade are generally reflected within about a second or so. So what you see on the screen versus what you feel on the trainer is pretty much in line. And then with erg mode responsiveness in terms of quick changes in resistance, it seems to take about two to three seconds to make that change. And I find that change is pretty fluid where it's not like you're hitting a brick wall with a sudden increase. And then one thing really quick before we get into power accuracy is that the Kicker V5 virtually estimates cadence without the need for a cadence sensor. And I found this to work pretty well most of the time. Like on this ride with a lot of varying cadence, there was really no issues to speak of, even on these drastic changes in the cadence in this section right here. And on these sections where it was a little bit off, like here and here, we're talking about basically only being off by about two to three RPM. Okay, so now with all that out of the way, let's talk about power accuracy and how well this has fared over the last 18 months of use. So like I was mentioning, the V5, it doesn't require any manual calibration. It just silently automatically calibrates in the background and I haven't done a thing to it since I first got it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some rides that I've done just recently to see if it still holds true to that claim of plus or minus 1% power accuracy. So here's an erg mode workout with Trainer Road, and I'll be comparing the Kicker V5 to Wahoo's own Powerlink pedals, which by the way are phenomenally accurate pedal-based power meters. And as you can see, the average power for the entire workout was within an astonishingly close margin of just 0.13 watts. And over the course of the workout, you can see that it's basically a mirror image in regards to power. However, I did want to highlight this middle section of intervals right here. So on this third set, there was this one moment where the kicker reported a little bit low. And then on the fourth interval right here, there was an ever so slight spike. Nothing crazy by any means though, and nothing I would be concerned about because the rest of the workout looked fantastic. And then here's a recent ride that I did on Zwift, and this time around, it was a little bit farther off compared to the Vivero Asiyama Duo pedals, but still within range if we take into account drivetrain loss as the power collected from pedals will generally be the highest since that's the closest point of contact to your body where the trainer is a little bit farther down the line. And if we take a look at these sprints right here in the middle, things look pretty good with the first sprint. There was a little bit of variance with the second and third sprint, and then the last sprint, it basically nailed it. And then I also wanted to highlight this section right here, which shows a whole bunch of different scenarios in regards to flywheel speed as well as cadence. So this first section shows me with the big ring in the front with the biggest cog in the back. This second section is me with the big ring in the front with the smallest cog in the back. The third section is with the small ring in the front with the biggest cog in the back. And then finally, the last section is with the big ring in the front and the smallest cog in the back. And as you can see, everything looks pretty darn dandy here. And there's really not much to complain about. When the Kicker V5 initially came out, there were some scenarios, I think with like low flywheel speeds and high power output, where the power accuracy was not all that accurate, but I haven't seen any of those issues with any of the recent firmware updates. So I think we're good to go in the power accuracy department. All right, so after using this trainer for over 18 months, what are my thoughts about it? Well, I love that it's virtually silent. The multiple Bluetooth connections, those come in super, super handy. And I actually love this handle up here. I know that may sound kind of silly, but I kind of switch trainers pretty often. So just having that handle there to easily be able to pick it up and move it, super, super handy. But most importantly, I love the fact that it's remained accurate over many, many hours of use without me having to do any sort of manual calibration. So it's been a great reference point when testing other power meters. So that's my extremely long-term review of the Wahoo Kicker V5. And I've also got a long-term review of the Tax Neo 2T that's coming up. So make sure to subscribe to get a notification when that video comes out. And if the information in this video did help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below. It's, it's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit. And I appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.